Alrighty, everyone. It is time for the conclusion of DSP versus the Internet. Our episode 28, which has been August 27th, 2023. I certainly hope that you guys have enjoyed the show. I have. It's been a great show. We had a really good variety of stuff this time. I really enjoyed it. So thank you to those who nominated videos for this week. I have really liked the lineup this week. Hopefully we can keep this going. We have a lot of new members this week. And if you want to be a part of the fun next week and have a chance to get your video watched, please become a member today. Uh, I'm actually going to be putting up the threads by which members can be nominating videos for next week's show tonight on this channel, on the community tab, okay? All right. Without further ado, let us get into the final uh, videos for the show of this week. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Right my arm. And that hurt. What gives you the right to strike me with your elbow? Dude. The first time you went like that to me, I ignored it. And you jabbed me again. I didn't jab you. And I could you. see where it was going and what I said to you, and this was a word of warning. I jabbed you. I did not jab you. I you was, jabbed me. I was petrified. And what I said to you is physical acts of aggression get taken very seriously on an airplane. I if you she... begin to get aggressive, they will put handcuffs on you. I was getting your attention. I did this. I was tapping your arm with my elbow. I had and arm, you went like that. I had told you on more than one occasion that I wasn't putting the volume down. Well, you know what? I kept asking because it was driving me crazy. So then you decided to do this. And after the second one, I gave you one back as a way to say, stop it. So and you said that's enough? Exactly. No, yeah, you got my attention, but I'm not a dog. So why don't you heed my suggestions of stop it when I ask politely? Because you're not the complete boss of me. I control my body. I control what I do. And you don't have the right to hit me that hard. I lightly tapped your arm with my elbow. Wait. Stop. Let me talk. I lightly tapped your arm with my elbow to get your Look at her face. Oh, my God. <laughs> her face is so intense. Bam. Right in my arm. It actually left a mark for about 20 minutes. But 20 minutes later, it was finally okay, faded. backing up, you said you're not the boss of me. I am the boss of you. When a mother says to be quiet, she's the boss of you, and you need to listen to that. Bottom I line, never said... when a teacher says something, she's the boss of you, and you Shut need to listen. Shut up! Give me a turn to speak! <sighs> Fine, see? You do that to me. How does it feel? How does it feel to be told to shut up? <sighs> We've talked about <laughs> Put your hands on me. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? No, I asked you a question. You know what? Shut up! Apparently that's the only word that gets your attention. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I, of course, always knew that there was a, an incredible amount of rage and anger there. But the depths of it surprised me. And, of course, when he raised his hand and slapped me across the face... That absolutely surprised me. I did lightly slap her on the cheek to show her how that feels. So. Oh, guess what? This got claimed. We have to boot. Guys, <clears> just <throat> to warn you, the stream might actually get shut down now because we watched that for two and a half minutes, and that's getting claimed. So, I here's my here's my thoughts on that. Okay, that but I think that whole family was screwed up, like both sides was really screwed up like you could tell that that's just two you know a, a mother and son who have no kind of a real loving relationship they're yelling at each other apparently hitting each other you know it's fucked up they both i think they both need counseling and they both need that i don't think that in, at least from what you saw initially there you could tell that both sides were kind of having pro messed up and having problems right so i don't think it's the kids fault I, you know probably i mean obviously more of the blame goes to the parent always because the parent should know better but I think that that's a situation where they were both at fault. Okay? So, by the way, uh, we, this, this stream might get shut down because I watched it for more than two minutes. And when something gets claimed on YouTube for more than two minutes, sometimes it suspends the stream. We'll see. I hope not. I'm trying to wait and see. And somehow, you know, somehow, so far, no. But <laughs> it's amazing, huh? Hopefully, the video doesn't get blocked. Again, if you're watching this on demand and you notice a big chunk of the video is missing at the beginning, that's what happened. I uploaded it and YouTube blocked that first part. Okay. All right, let's continue. What is this? Gaming hot takes? Elden Ring. 
is better than Pod Vango. Okay, for real now, let's start. New Battlefront 2 is better than old Battlefront 2, and it's not even close. The old one Wrong. did some things better, but it loses when you compare their core gameplay mechanics. Wrong! Titanfall 2 isn't that good. I think it's good and fun, yeah. But not to the level the circle jerk would have you believe. That I that I do believe. Like, Titanfall 2 was good. It was a decent campaign and everything. But it wasn't I wasn't in love with it. I thought the campaign was well executed. I even said that to you guys. The online was not good at all. The online was pretty much almost identical to the first game and wasn't very entertaining. I remember I played through the campaign and that was it. He is not hot. She's got the figure of a twinky little boy. Y'all are freaks. Republic Correct. Commando has not aged well. From a gameplay perspective, oh, I never played with FromSoft man. practically releases the same thing every time, but people give COD shit. Pick a stance. He's right. He's, I mean, that, that's a fair stance. Almost all those FromSoft games have the same core gameplay mechanics and similar things, but everyone gives Call of Duty a, 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 a shit. Now, the thing is, Call of Duty is worse, right? Absolutely. Call of Duty sometimes doesn't even try. Do you like formulas or not? You don't hate Fortnite and Among Us. You hate the YouTubers playing them. Uh... Well, I've never played Among Us, so I don't hate it. I don't hate Fortnite, I just don't like it. I've played it and I don't really enjoy it. <laughs> Man, close your mouth! I can see your uvula. <laughs> well, the modern gaming industry is largely terrible, so are gamers. So maybe this is deserved. This is no longer a hot takes video. This is my manifesto. <laughs> they are never going to release GTA 6. There's plenty to love in modern gaming, you pretentious hipster. <laughs> VR chat isn't fun. You're just lonely. VR- Nah, VR chat was very stupid will never be as huge as they want it to be because it demands physical activity from gamers. 100% correct. Plus the limitations of the VR technology still. VR technology is not caught up to where they pretend it is. You still need these open areas. You still need all this bullshit. It's nonsense. Six is not funny. You only think he's funny because at the start of Destiny 2, he was the only one of the three vanguards to have any kind of personality. Do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. I didn't think he was funny. The fuck up. Destiny 2 is a good video game. Miles Morales Wrong. is just as good, if not better, than the first game. That is correct. Improved on so many aspects from the original, and yeah, it was shorter, but the first one had lame missions. Uh, they just made the same game. Once again, I refer you to this. <laughs> I was disappointed with the ending of Doom Eternal. I wanted. Yeah, to I was disappointed with the entire game of Doom Eternal. I didn't like it at all. Use the big suit to fight the big monster. Unrelated, but I want a Pacific Rim game. Halo fans are the worst fans. This isn't really a hot take, I'm just always looking for an excuse to say this. While we're at it, Halo 3 multiplayer is terrible and boring. I sincerely believe that. You may refer to my tier list. Star Wars Squadrons exists. I don't yeah, I know, I didn't play it. No, almost no one did. It just came out and it just like disappeared immediately. I skipped it too. Knights of the Old Republic. It's so clunky and boring. People like to tell me, but the story's amazing. I can't exactly enjoy the story if I want to blow my brains out playing the game. <laughs> Wanting the new code. It wasn't that bad. I mean, yes, it definitely was the early predecessor to the Bioware formula from later, and it had a lot of shortcomings because of it, but I found it more fascinating to enjoy it that way or to have more modern action RPG mechanics is like asking Dark Souls to have an easy mode. Here's nah. the thing though, I don't want Souls games to have an easy mode, but I want the new KOTOR to have more modern mechanics, because I hate this boring shit. This split, in my strong opinion, has caused my mind to become fragmented and broken. Uh. Morbius is the Assassin's Creed of movies. Outriders is a real video game. PlayStation has better- No, no one played Outriders either exclusives but xbox has game pass so get fucked kratos <laughs> fall guys was the only fun battle royale and yet it faded out of popularity yeah this is because the world is a cruel place my dog can beat up your no not because the world is a cruel place because they didn't put out enough content for it they kept putting out stupid like licensed packs and stuff but then the core game didn't improve enough to take hold interest you know i played it for that summer and i got super bored with it and didn't really want to play it anymore and then when i even went back like a year later i was like yeah even with the new stuff, it just wasn't that interesting. Dog. Environmentally speaking, Cyberpunk has one of the best open worlds I've played, especially now with the next-gen update. Stop sucking game dev cock after they fix their broken game. 
I'm not saying be a negative Nelly forever, but tone it down. Yeah, they gave you a functioning product that you paid for. That's what they're supposed to do. <laughs> for example, Cyberpunk. I've been loving the next-gen update, but I'm not about to get on my knees, mouth open, like the entire subreddit. I've never played Bioshock or Witcher 3. Battlefield is worse than COD. Actually, is that is that really a hot take? Horizon Zero Dawn. No, it's not a hot take. Everyone agrees now. There was a few Battlefields that were quite good, like Battlefield 4, but they haven't been good in ages. Looks so fucking boring and generic. Please stop asking me to play. Duh. I don't like open world racing games. Yes, that includes Burnout Paradise. The type of racing game I want, I don't know what you call it. Is it Arcade Racer? The type where you pick an event or game mode and just race? You know, like the first Need for Speed Underground, Burnout 3, Burnout Legends, the Forza Motorsport series, uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed. Hot Wheels Unleashed. Just I never, I never played that. A lot of people told me to. All right, let's move on because I want to watch a lot of videos by the this final part. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this isn't milk, is it? Yes, it's milk. <laughs> a bag of milk. She's so happy. That's confused. <laughs> what is... What it's so you, dangerous. What do you mean? Why? Why would you put it in a bag? I'm really uncomfortable about this whole area. Hello, welcome to a very special episode of the vlog because today I'm in front of a Canadian grocery store, no frills, with my non-Canadian friend, Mr. Jason Holler. Come on in here. Hey. There he is. Jason has never been inside a Canadian grocery store. Me either. So we thought, let's go to no frills, which is a big Canadian grocery store chain, and see what the differences are. Our ultimate goal is to find three items to buy, bring out, and try of things that you've never seen before or that may be made differently in Canada for you. You ready? Okay. Ready. This will be interesting. Let's go. Okay. Why, what's different in Canada? All right, let's just go right into it. Here you go. Enough for them to fit on the directions on packaging as it is, but to do it in two languages, that's just super impressive. <laughs> So what's weird? Don't forget, we're looking for three things that are we're gonna buy from anywhere in the store. Right. Could be toilet paper. Could be. <laughs> what? Whoa, look at that. Never seen this before. You've seen those. This is like a moon pie. I've never seen anything like oh. it though. Wait, what? Ju what's a moon pie? You don't know what a Joe Louis? Joe Louis? No, no, we call moon pies. Yeah. This, we have to get this. A Joe Louis? No, I never wow. heard of a Joe Louis. Huge breakthrough through right now. We nope. found our first thing. All right, what else? Beans. Ooh, greeting cards. Did they say like for my Canadian grandson, Alpha Getty. Yeah. Have you ever seen this before? Alpha <laughs> what? Alpha Getty? Like alphabet spaghetti? I don't think it's called Alpha Getty here though. Yeah, something that looks similar, but it's not the same name. Madola. We're going back to the thing where it shows you the same packaging. What different name? A different name. It's like Bizarro World yeah, over here. Yeah, it really is. It's freaking me out. Yeah. You guys not have Nabisco? Good thing. Okay, because it's wheat thins. Right, more crispy. Wait a second. They Nabisco makes these? Yeah. Wheat thins USA. Yeah. It says Nabisco. What? Yeah, oh look. look. But if we come back over here, it says Christy. Christy. Yeah. So it could be a few different things. Here, so this has happened to me in the United States, okay? When I lived in Connecticut, which is on the east coast of the United States, and you go and you're gonna get mayonnaise, okay? There's one that's called uh Hellman's mayonnaise. It's very popular. Hellman's, it's a big company on the East Coast. They usually have an ad on TV. Bring out the Hellman's and bring out the best. I remember the jingle, okay? Then when I moved out here, I went to get mayonnaise and it, I went to grab it and I was like, wait, what? Best foods mayonnaise? And for some reason, it's the same exact product from the same exact company, but it's called Best Foods instead of Hellman's out here in Washington State. And I have no idea why it's called something different. It's like there's something to do with regions or something. They can't be called the same thing in a certain region. Maybe it's a distributor issue. I don't know. But it's the same product. Yeah. See? Where'd this go? My whole life is ruined. <laughs> the... All the cookies down there that are crispy, yeah. you'll find in the Nabisco. Nabisco product. Why did you go through product. the work of changing everything, all the artwork? Yeah, how much money that got? Mondelez International owns Christie. So, who owns... Nabisco. Mondelez International. We've cracked the code. Yeah. Why is it why is it say something different? Why can't they just so be called it worldwide? What is it? Oh, Ovaltine. What is it? 
Yep. And the only reason I know Ovaltine is from the movie um, Christmas Story. Christmas Story. Christmas Story, you jackass. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine, like Little Orphan Annie tells you. Christmas story. Thank oh. you. All right, we're still looking for two. We're still looking for yeah, two we gotta, things. We gotta amp it up here. You know, I'm getting hungry. I am too. Here we go. Dad's. I've had these. Dad's. I, I think I literally brought them in Dad's to, to the office. The American side has a lot more choices of Oreos than we do here. Just get them. Jamie's gonna be happy. Okay. So what this is that? Is a, this Coffee is a crisp. Yeah. This is a four. You don't get these. Where are the smarties? Right here. That's not that's not Smarties for you. This is not my Smartie. I've never knew that until recently that Smarties is actually a different type of candy for them. And it's that's right. That's rockets. what I ate when you I was getting those Smarties. Smarties yep. actually Canadian Smarties oh, you're called Rockets. So they have something else called Smarties. Oh I don't God. know what that is. This is another challenge for another day. Chocolate syrup. <laughs> Ew. Yes. A giant right, thing. Get? The branding on these is so weird. You have Frosted Mini Wheats? We have Come mini wheats. The original is the frosted. Oh, the original is the frosted. Well, I think so. I don't know. Am it I looks, wrong? It looks frosted. And they spelled original wrong down here. Original A. That's the French version. How about Pringles? Oh, yeah. But the ketchup one? Ketchup Pringles. No. No ketchup Pringles. There we go. Let's do that. This is our second item, I think. <laughs> Smarties are like M&Ms, are they? Are they chocolate? Because ours is fruit. It's like very sour fruit flavor. Little crunchy candy. Very similar to like a Pez. You ever had a Pez? It's similar to that, but it's like a circle thing. It kind of melts in your mouth, but you can crunch it too. That's what Smarties in the United States. He's looking at the milk in the bag. What's this? Different condiments. They look the same though. Just different names, right? Kellogg's corn So pies. we have these. Yeah. They are not the same. But they're made by Kellogg's. Kellogg's corn pops. Yeah. Why would they make them different? They make them different in, in Canada than they do in they're the They're completely States. different. Look, they are. In the United States, they're very smooth, and they're covered in, like, this honey, sticky sugar substance. So when you put it into the bowl, the milk changes color a little bit, and it gets very sweet. But they do, they get, they're, at first they're very crunchy, but then they get very mushy over a little bit of time. That looks completely different. Look at that on the right. I don't see any of the coating whatsoever on the cereal at all. It looks completely different. Ours are much crunchier, uh, sweeter. They don't even taste the same. No, ours are What the hell? Ours it's not the same. It's like totally corn, different. Like flatter. Yeah. It's a completely different type of cereal. Like you can't, you shouldn't call them the same thing. No, yeah, that's weird. Why different. do they call them the same? Oh, they're closing in 15 minutes. We've been here for two hours. I think we've gotten, we did pretty well. Right, milk, Pringles, ketchup Pringles. Oh my God, the milk oh. is about to fall. The bag of milk, it's they're buying the bag of milk. That's why everyone gets carts here, because they know they got to get the milk. That's a lot of people. All right, so they're going to check out. They're trying the items. He's drinking the bag of milk in the lot. Ketchup Pringles are good. It's been right in front of us the whole time. What? It's a potato. What's a potato? French fry. What do you put on French fries? Ketchup. It's it's working. It's good. It's a, I bet that would be good. Great, and not to mention we're starving. <laughs> Could go for some milk or buckle. All right. Well, I got just the thing. <laughs> Three bags. Of a Canadian bag milk. of milk. Oh, there's a smaller bag in the bag. How the hell are you? What are you supposed to do with that? I don't like it. I don't like it. Where's the? Does it don't you? Go? Don't I have to put it in a container oh, after the oh, fact? No. Oh, yeah. oh no! Oh my god! Hey, that's pretty. That's a good. That's a good thing you got. How is it? <coughs> it's actually really good. Yeah. If you have to, if you have to put it into a container after you open it, what's the point of having it in the bag? Just have the container, which is what we do here. It's either a carton or it's a, a jug and it's resealable. Why put it into a fucking bag? Oh my What's God. What's the point? Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, that's enough. Bring it up. Bring it up. Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> now that's a frosty glass of milk. Ah. 
What is that? I don't know. It's weird. Nice chips with milk you pour it into a glass. Yes, but again, then if you have leftover, what do you do? How do you reseal that bag? It's just squirt everywhere. Dessert. Like a moon pie. Is it a moon pie? It looks like a moon pie. Well, look it up. Or like a, like a malo, very sweet. It's like a little Debbie uh, cake almost. You have a little Debbie, don't you? I thought we saw the whole. You have a little, you have a little Debbie, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Cakey. Yeah. So it's a little bit more. Yeah. What, what, moon pies. The cake is dry, and it tastes a lot like marshmallow and a little bit like malt. Well, he's that looks more chocolatey to me. Yeah. That I've n noticed in America are less sugary than here. Like the cereal is less sugary, chocolate is less sugary, yeah. it's more dark. It's weird. Or you think it's, it should be the opposite. Now, what's the final ruling here? What's better? How do you feel about this place? The selection is very similar. It all looked the same. The packaging looked the same. But the brands were all different. Right. It's really the freakiest part of that whole experience. This is interesting. Okay, let's continue. What is with all these? What is all these mo these supermarket videos today? I mean, this is a supermarket. That's their disease. Twins that can't stop eating. Ew, his nose is bleeding. Did you see that? His nose started bleeding out of nowhere. What the hell was that? Connecticut. year old twins, Stevie and Eddie, have a rare condition that affects one in twenty-five thousand. Part of Willie's is a rare genetic disease. Their appetite is overwhelming. They are just never full. Huh. They will inhale their food while they'll choke on it. So I lock up my food pantry and I lock up the refrigerator. I have to lock up all the food. I have to lock up the cat food. I have to lock up the chemicals. Press start. So they have an insatiable hunger and they'll even eat irrationally because they have such an insatiable hunger. Like she said, they'll eat the they'll eat the cat food. They'll drink chemicals. Holy shit! Job. I might eat. Because they'll get up in the middle of the night and um, eat until they fall asleep. They'll eat so they'll eat until they die. And they're usually sleepwalking when they're doing it, but they'll also eat out of the garbage. We always have to take the garbage out hmm. and put it outside. Phoebe's doing the recycling. You gotta help. Perfect, bud. Perfect. Now take that full one out. I don't think they're aware of it. They're just so hungry that they'll just eat. Uh, wherever they see food, they'll eat it off the floor. They'll eat it off anybody's floor. Oh my God. It broke up the family. The condition. So it's a rare genetic condition where they just never feel like they're satisfied with food. They always want to eat something. Now I wonder, and I'm, I'm now not, no medical professional here, could this be cured with some kind of mental training? Like, could they psychologically be trained to not care? I know that sounds wild, but just to give you some perspective, okay? Um, when I was younger, I had a super duper bad back injury. I actually had a severely herniated disc in my lower back. And I had pain all the time. It was like, even in my sleep, I had pain. I never had a reprieve from this ongoing pain. Okay? But after a while of this happening, probably about a year of it, essentially I became desensitized to it to the point where I just... Like, for anyone else to have a shocking, sharp pain going up your legs into your back all the time would probably be considered life-ending debilitating, right? But I kind of got used to it to the point where it just became my life. And it wasn't good, but obviously, like, I got desensitized to it to the point where I wasn't letting it bother me that much anymore. What I've actually found now today, and this is truthful, is that my body has actually... Uh, got used to pain like I don't really feel pain as bad anymore I don't know if that makes sense but like when I was younger I reacted to pain in a lot of ways like more people did but now I don't really react to pain that much anymore 
You know what I'm saying? Like, when I get hurt, it's like, okay, it hurts, but I'm not like, oh, God, it hurts. I just, I don't really feel the same anymore. It's because I had such bad pain earlier in my life that I don't really get that reaction to pain anymore. So if you always felt hungry, could it, you get to the point where you just don't let it, it just, it's not a big deal anymore? I mean, that could go the other way too. You're hungry, but you just don't care about eating because you feel hungry all the time. And since you eat, it doesn't solve your hunger. So maybe you just don't eat and you could go the other way too. It's just as deadly the other way, right? Hmm. But I'm, what I'm wondering is if you always felt hungry, would this affect your body in other ways? Because when you feel hungry, your body has a response. It makes certain things happen to make you think eat. So I wonder if this is affecting them in another way. I'll be divorced two years in October, so they were 10. At 90 kilograms and 87 kilograms, the twins are currently classed as morbidly obese and have a host of medical problems, including fatty liver disease. It's very hard for them because I'm very strict with huh. their food intake and I only give them 1,200 calories a day. As well as an insatiable appetite, prader willi syndrome can also result in behavioral problems, including tantrums and stubbornness. Well, I mean, yeah, of course. And where's that go, buddy? Doesn't go there, it goes in the dishwasher, right? Eddie, where'd you go? He doesn't care. <laughs> Diana's close friend, Blair, has been a No, that's of... fucked up because that's gonna just, it's gonna give them mental illness and there's, that's not their fault. How are you supposed to be normal when you have a, an insane disorder like that? Port. It is 24 hour job. It's like an infant, but they're larger and they've got opinions and they're stubborn. Who are you hugging? Refrigerator or me? You. Okay. Uppy, uppy. You have two arms? <laughs> That's how he hugs. That's his hug. Stevie will be very violent. He will just pout. He'll knock things over. And he'll go slam a door. Come on, babe. Stevie. Hmm. Stevie. When he gets really upset, they get nosebleeds. They just get nosebleeds out of nowhere. Both boys are also on the autism spectrum, which further contributes to their behavior. Oh my God. And for Diana, just like their everything. outbursts in public can be more than just embarrassing. I do have the fear of calling my- That's crazy, you're getting nosebleed out of nowhere. Is there like an end to this video? Woohoo! Don't hold the dialogue. <laughs> I love you, mom. I love you. I wonder what happened. I mean, this is seven years ago. I wonder if there's like a follow-up somewhere about what actually happened to these kids, right? Now that they're adults. Okay, we got time for one or two more. We're, we're ending here. So uh, let's see how we're going to end it today. What happens right after uh, a human passes uh, to afterlife? They experience a potential of a variety of things. Many of them, not all of them, many of them experience the actual interdimensional shift which you interpret as a tunnel of light. Not everyone experiences that. Some people just wake up. Oh, here I am. And where they are, I mean, wh where they are they here, up. but in a different dimension, in a different frequency domain, in what you call the spirit realm. But they... Bashar, the afterlife? Who is Bashar? This person is speaking as if they actually factually know. No one knows. So this is ridiculous. How could you speak like you factually know? They're and, here. Uh, is that temporary? That realm? I mean, they're Now, please understand, you're asking questions from a linear perspective. So from a linear perspective, yes, it can be temporary. In actuality, everything exists at the same time. So you are always physical and you are always in spirit. Mm -hmm. So, it just depends on how you want to look at this idea. If you want to look at it from an experiential point of view, a linear point of view, then yes. You die, you go into spirit, you can decide to be reborn, you can have different adventures in non-physical reality, you can be born into different civilization. I mean, it's, it's a great thing to think about, but do we have any evidence of any of this whatsoever? Right? You can just say things and know nothing. <laughs> right? How do you know anything? Where's your evidence of anything you're saying? Because if there was evidence, then obviously we would know. We don't know shit. I don't know. This guy's this guy is way too like. Oh, matter of fact, yes, all this is factual. Uh huh. Oh, here we go. Audible Inc. presents "Go the Fuck to Sleep," written by Adam Mansback, narrated by Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, good. The cats 
nestle close to their kittens. The lambs have laid down with the sheep. You're cozy and warm in your bed, my dear. Please go the fuck to sleep. All right. And that's it. That's how we're going to end this week's show. That's the perfect ending. Thank you all for watching DSP versus the internet. <laughs> that, I don't think you could have a more perfect ending to anything. Have Samuel L. Jackson just tell you to go the fuck to sleep. That was absolutely perfect. Okay. All right. So, guys, thank you so very much for watching the show. I hope you enjoyed it. What I would really like your week is feedback. What did you think? I actually think there was a good variety of stuff this week. Not all of it was great, but I do feel like the variety was was better. And we didn't have that many or, or even too many repeats. I did a little bit of the supermarket. There was a lot of supermarkets in today this week's videos for some reason. But outside of that, I thought it was a good mix. So, uh, you know, it stands to reason. The more people we have as members and the more people we have submitting videos, the better the show is. I've been saying this all along since we started in February, that if you have less people submitting videos, the show is going to have the same kind of videos all the time. But when you get a bigger base of people submitting videos, the show is better. I had a great time this week. I really did. I thought it was good variety. I was entertained for a lot of it. <clears throat> now, if you would like to be a part of the fun next week, if you become an ultra member, we're guaranteed to watch your video. If you become a standard member, we watch the randomized playlist and there's a chance we will watch your video. So, I urge you, please consider becoming a member of some sort. That is how I get my support on this channel. That is why this show has existed for 28 episodes and climbing, all right? So thank you all. And to those who were here today and did support the channel in some way, I thank you all very much. 153 members is the most we've ever had. So we are growing here on DSP Reacts, and I really appreciate that, all right? Thank you all. I'm going to uh, upload these now to the channel. You'll see them slowly appear over the course of the week. If you are a member, you get to watch the archive stream live right away. You don't have to wait. And thank you, everyone here as a live audience. You guys are awesome as well. I appreciate everyone who chills and hangs out with me during my react show every single week. All right, everybody? All right. If you're looking for when you can nominate clips for next week, I do it every night after the fact of the stream. So later tonight, I'll post up the thread by which you guys can nominate the uh, clips for next week. Okay? Thank you all. See you next time for DSP versus the Internet. Peace out.